Hey, this is Mr. Sand, and I'm going to walk you through how to do significant figures and uncertainty today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some um, problems, just some some sig fig problems. Uh, as you might have heard in the audio lecture, uh, significant figures are just there to show how certain you are of a measurement. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go through each and every one of these um, problems, and I'm going to just say how many significant figures they are. And from that, we're going to find a rule um, on how to first identify the number of significant figures. And then after we find that rule, we're, gonna sh we're just going to go through a couple examples of uh, calculating with significant figures. And then after that, we're going to use this little diagram down here to talk about how certain you can be in your measurements and degree of uncertainty. All these were, are related to each other, all these ideas. So we'll start off over here with the measurement. This is in centimeters, so this is 0.1 centimeters. This is one sig fig right here. So I'm going to write, ooh, I'm going to get a different color. I'm going to use tangerine for my color. So this is one sig fig. This right here, there's two sig figs. Now, I meant um, to have this measurement right here be 2.0. 2. Point, I'm, I'm sorry, 2.10 centimeters. So this would be three sig figs here. This measurement is one, two, three, four sig figs. This is one sig fig. This is a weird one. There's only one sig fig here. This one was again meant to have a, uh, a couple more zeros at the end of this. This would be five sig, yeah, five sig figs. This is two sig figs. This, if this has another zero back behind it, like it was supposed to, this is just three sig figs. And this is one, two, three, four sig figs. And I use this as just a way to start talking about the rules involved with sig figs. So I'm going to use a different color right now. I'm going to use mocha. <clears throat> so the rules for sig figs are, you first go from left to right and you look at the first non-zero number and you start counting your significant figures. So here we go from left to right. Zero is a non-zero. Um, zero, sorry, zero is a zero. So it's not a non-zero. The first non-zero number we have is that one there, and then we have no other digits after that. So there's only one sig fig here. Here, two is a non-zero number, and one is a non-zero number. So we've got one, two significant figures here. Now here's the first rule that's kind of interesting. We have a non-zero number here, a non-zero number, and then we have a zero. But because this zero is after a decimal place and after a non-zero number, it is considered to be significant. So I'll say that one more time. Because this zero is after a non-zero number and, and because it's after a decimal, it's considered to be significant. So that zero means something. It means that we are... Well, that's our last estimated digit right there, so it is, it is a significant figure. So we say that that's three significant figures. If there was another zero after this, that would be four significant figures. If there's another zero after that, there would be five significant figures, and so on. It would all be significant as long as they're after that decimal place. The decimal is the thing that activates those zeros after the non-zeros. So the decimal is very, very important. Here... We have zeros that are sandwiched in between the non-zero numbers, and so because they're sandwiched, they're in between those two, they are also significant. So in this case, we've got four significant figures. Here, we just have one non-zero number, so that's significant. Here, this is a strange situation. We've got a non-zero, and then we've got a couple of zeros after it. But unlike this situation up here, there are no decimal places. So these zeros are not significant. They are just as we say, placeholders. So they don't they don't really mean anything besides this is the place of our last significant figure. It is two in the two hundredths place. So those zeros are not significant here. So there's only one significant figure. Now let's go to this case over here, and just like a rule up above. Um, we've got a non-zero, which is the two, and then we've got zero zero point zero zero. 
In this case, oh, this case is so strange. In this case, we have um, these zeros, which like above, you would think, oh, well then they must be not significant. But here's the weird thing. When you have that decimal place involved here, as soon as you have the decimal, it's like a button that activates. You can push it. It activates those other zeros. So this number right here really means that we are certain up to this decimal place right here. So there are one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Five significant figures. They come after the decimal place, and these come with a decimal, so they count as significant as well. So you've got a non-zero, zero, 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 and all those zeros are significant. In this case now, this is a strange, an, another way to twist you around and make you maybe dislike sig figs, but there's actually a lot of reason behind this. <sighs> Here we've got a zero, a zero, a zero, and then the first non-zero, and then another non-zero. Because these zeros are not after these non-zero digits here, these two and this one, they are just placeholders as well. They are just placeholders. They don't say anything about the measurement. There are only two significant figures here. So we can only say there are two significant figures in this measurement. Again, you need to activate. You need to start counting your significant figures only when you hit the first non-zero number. So up here, it was non-zero right there at that one. Here is non-zero at that two. Over here, if there's a non-zero and a non-zero, which is the two and the one, and then you have a zero after that, and it's after the decimal, or just so that there's a decimal involved here, then all three of these digits are significant. So this is a significant figure. There's three significant figures here. And this is the last one, again, it's a sandwich rule you have two zeros sandwiched in between two non-zeros, so that's four. All right. Now, let's say that you now have to do some calculations. You have to calculate uh, 1.2 times one meter. And you want to find, so this is one meter, 1.2 meters times one meter. In this case right here, we only have, we only have two significant figures, one, two, and there we only have one significant figure. So in this case, let me just make that decimal place clear. In this case, 1.2 times one, it will get you this answer in the calculator. It'll say 1.2 meters, and then you, if since you're multiplying these two things, it'd be meters times meters, which is meters squared for our units. But here, we only have one significant figure, compared to this, which is two significant figures. When you run into the case like this, where it's 1.2, there's two significant figures, times one significant figure right here, which is just happens to be the number one, then you have to only report your final answer to two significant arms. <laughs> wow, only one significant figure there. You're, you're limited by the least number of significant figures. In this case, it's that one. So what you have to do, I'm going to use red to illustrate this. You have to round. And the way you round is you count your answer out to the number of significant figures you need to round to, and then you chop off the rest. So here we go. There's only one significant figure that we go to, so it's going to be one. And then we have to shink. We have to cut off the rest of this number. But this rest of the number can tell us if we need to round this remaining number up or stay the same. So in this case, we just stay the same. And the final answer is going to be one meter squared. Using the correct sig figs, that is all you can report of 1.2 times one. This is the way calculation should always be because it really, what it does is it tells you this one is we're not certain, not certain of this measurement as much as you are of this measurement over here. You are pretty happy about this one. There's you smiling. This one, not so certain, maybe unhappy face, because you're not so certain. <laughs> and maybe a single tear. We'll do that in aqua. Here's your single tear, because you're not certain. Boop. <laughs> Looks like another eye. Anyway, you're not certain there. So, um, you can't report your final answer. If these two are now calculated together, you can't report your final answer to two significant figures because this one's only got one significant figure. And so you need to report that certainty within your answer, and this is how you do it. This is one 
meter square. That's all you can report. And I think that is the most honest way to report. And you should not think that you need to write 1.2 here. Just because you've done it in a math class all of your life doesn't mean you should do it here. This is the right way to calculate. And I stand by that. So let's do another problem. Um, we'll just multiply them by really easy things that you could do in your head. Let's do one that's um, now I've been talking about div uh, multiplication, but you can also use this for division as well. Multiplication and division. It works the same way. I won't touch on addition and subtraction. It's just too much. Um, we'll just only talk about uh, uh, multiplication and division here because those are the only things you'll run into in physics for the most part. Um, so let's say you have a long calculation or let's just do another problem like this. All right, let's just do that. Let's do 200.0 meters divided by, um, I don't know why we'd want to do this, but let's just say 1.00 grams, meters over grams. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but let's just say you're doing it. So your answer in your calculator, I'm guessing, <coughs> excuse me, you might want to, you might be tempted to say that this is just going to be 200.0 meters over grams. That you might be tempted to say that's your final answer. But here you've got four significant figures, I think. Yep, that decimal there activates this last zero. And here you've got three significant figures that decimal activates that those two zeros. So our final answer can only be limited. It has to be limited to three significant figures. And I'm, oh, I'm glad that I'm, I'm doing this case. In this case, it's strange because you have, if you're going to round here, you have to go three significant figures over because that's what your answer has to be. One, two, three. And you shrink, you cut off that last digit. But here, you might say, okay, well, that's 200. But if you leave it as 200, that answer looks like it only has one significant figure. You need a decimal place. So you can put a decimal, if you like, right after your answer. Or you can do something else, which is even fancier. And I prefer this. You can use scientific notation. And your calculator has a way of doing this. If you have a TI-80 whatever, you can use um, the scientific uh, notation mode on your calculator, but this is how you'd report it. This would be three significant figures. I, I think we can all agree to that, that number is. And then you can say, okay, well that's multiplied by 10 to the second, and you have to use again your units, meters over grams. This, 10 to the second, that doesn't add anything to your number of sig figs, but this tells you your number of sig figs. You've got three sig figs here. So this, either one of these, I'd accept as the right answer to this problem. Okay, now let's say you have a very complicated uh, multi-step problem where you need to multiply, divide, and multiply again, and multiply again, and eventually you'll figure out what your answer is. Um, what you do there is you just look for whatever starting numbers you're given, and you limit your final answer to the least number of sig figs. That's just the rule, and it makes life much easier if you abide by that rule. So look at your starting values given to you, and always go to the least number of sig figs in your final answer. I'll remind you throughout every single problem how to round with sig figs, so this is a good introduction, and we'll just practice it more and more and more.